I do. Does it help to have the familiarity that you faced everybody that's in this field, or is that limiting you in some way because they know about you as well? Well, I, it depends on how you look at it. I think for us, it's um, a little less preparation um, because we have seen them all. Um, so now it's just a matter of being able to make the adjustments that we need to. And um, yeah, I mean, at, at that stage of the game in today's world, um, you pretty much are going to, it could happen quite often, the way the tournaments are set up now. And I think more people are starting to look at RPI and looking at strength of schedule. And so they're not sitting around playing patty cakes for 35 games. And, Yes. Their, you know, their, their win loss record. And since most of those outside of the Pac 12 were back in February, yeah. before that, there's a lot of differences between oh, the teams yeah. now, right? Oh, sure. I mean, at this stage of the game, these all these teams are probably a little bit different. Um, Washington, I, I don't think, is too much different. Um, but, uh, well, we played Florida early, and um, where else did we play? We played fairly early. Alabama. Oklahoma, Alabama, yeah, Oklahoma. Those. I mean, we we haven't faced them since February, so mm -hmm. I'm sure they're a little different team. What changed for your team after the Washington series? I think mindset, more than anything. Um, you know, just realizing that that if you're if you're going to move on and you're going to play big games, you have to have a big game mentality, and can't let the game get too quick, and got to be able to slow yourself down. And I think. Um, I think they did a really good job of that, you know. So now is now's the next level that they're going to jump up to. Um, no matter how much you prepare, you get in Oklahoma City and your motor's running a little bit higher than it usually does. But um, I think they're much more prepared right now um, to understand what, what, what they need to do to keep the game slowed down. Did you get a lot of uh, responses from former players or coaches after the, the win Saturday? What was oh, that God, like? Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, I, it's... My text messages have just are still going crazy right now, and it's people from not just people that that have played at Arizona, but even kids that I coached at Central Arizona College. You know, and I had one this morning where this uh, kid I had at Central Arizona um, remind me of about five quotes that I had given them. You know, and it's so everyone's got everyone's excited. Do you think um, Harper's power at the plate overshadows her defense? Oh, I think early on in her career it did. Um, I think her defense has gotten better. And um, I think part of that with her is being able to slow the game down defensively. And so um, I, th I think, yeah, people look at Harper and the first thing that's going to come out of their mouth is that you know, she can hit home runs. But I was very impressed with the way she played shortstop this past weekend. And that's what we're going to need, you know, from here on out. Yeah, can you compare her to some of the greats you had Espinosa, Standering, yeah. of course? And... We've had a bunch. I mean, Standering was, uh, I, I think, as good with the glove as anyone that we've ever had. Um, I think Espinosa was a, a very underrated uh, defensive player because of her power, kind of like Jess. Um, but, yeah, we've had, we've had a few. And the biggest thing, I think, at shortstop is, you know, if you can get a kid that can make 100% of the routine plays, then you've got a good shortstop. I think the toughest position to play at the, in this game is second base because there's so much more responsibility. So, um, yeah, this team, I think, has really done a good job of, of getting better defensively because I, I think they kind of understand how important that is. Is Deja also another player where her offense sometimes overshadows how good she is behind the plate? Oh, I think most people look at Deja and go, God, she's a, I mean, she's a, just a solid catcher. Um, and um, I think her offense has just started to blossom a little bit. I think a couple of years ago, you'd look at Deja and you go, oh, she's a great defensive catcher. But now she's a, she's a good player. I mean, she can play on both sides of the ball. And I think that's ultimately what you want. Um, you know, to be able to put nine people out there that gives you a, a, the best chance of being good offensively and defensively. What can you say about the way Carly has played the last few games? Well, Carly's just, a, she's a grinder. You know, she's... Um, She's a kid that thrives on pressure. She's a kid that thrives on, on someone telling her she can't do something. She's, she's grown up with that chip on her shoulder, and that's why you know, we call her Tanner because she's, she, she loves, um, loves those moments. And the, I think the great thing about her is she's just she, she comes to work every day and, and gives it everything she has and doesn't play all the other games. You know? And when, 
when when her time is called, she's usually ready for it, and she responds. Why, why does she have a chip on her shoulder? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> a few days later. I don't know. Yeah. You know, it's just... You know, she was a really good offensive player in high school, but it's when you move up to this level, especially with the short game, you know, she's she's starting to understand that she's got to expand what she can do. Um, and uh, because right now her game is basically about placement. And if she can make the ball hop and get it in the wrong place, because her speed is, um, you know, she, she doesn't have that Caitlin Lowe 2 6 speed. Um, so she's got to be able to handle the bat. But the thing I love about her is she, she usually sees the ball well, and she's going to put the ball in play. Um, you know, she's some way, somehow, she's really good at laying off the rise ball, stays on top of it. So there's a, a lot of reasons why she's in that lineup. What do, what do you remember about coaching Tony Mascarenas, and, and how does she compare, Alyssa, compared to her being her aunt? Um, no comparison. Mm -hmm. um, two different players. I mean, t Tony was an, an excellent um player I mean defensively mm -hmm. offensively she was um, you know very solid very short to the ball uh, didn't try to do too much although she did display some power toward the end of her career at some crucial times um, but Alyssa growing up is just a kid you look at and you go wow how far can she hit a ball mm -hmm. I mean she's just strong and and I think sometimes you don't realize that Alyssa's got above average speed um, if there's one thing I wish she had was a little stronger arm, which she's going to hopefully be able to get that. But she's just she's a different type of player. You know, I think people look at Alyssa and um, she's pretty intimidating at the plate. Tony, on the other hand, I don't think was intimidating, but but she was absolutely a rock when it came to pressure situations. How much did she help you recruit her here, Alyssa here? Well, I hope it was. Um, you know, doing a good job of taking care of Tony, that the family felt comfortable that I would do the same thing for Alyssa. Mm -hmm. what, what are the biggest improvements for Malia this year, Coach? Well, I said the other day that she's probably our, our most improved player, and um, I think I think most of it is just maturity, but I think she's really um, kind of found her niche offensively. Um, she's She's been able to pick good pitches and put good swings on it, she doesn't chase as much as she used to. Um, she makes pretty good adjustments. And I, I kind of stem all that back to that maturity level where she's had an opportunity to kind of grow into that position. And then I think defensively, she's just, um, she works hard and, and, and the uh, hard work is kind of paying off for her. You think it was difficult for her to follow Kati? Um, I thought it was a good thing for her to be able to watch someone like Kati, um, but, um, Two different players. I mean, Kati, when she got here, I was, it, it was all offense, you know. I mean, that's why we recruited her, and, and she was a good defensive player, but offensively, she was solid. When I recruited um, Malia, Malia was a shortstop, you know, in travel ball, and she was a lot smaller, uh, and that's the tough part about recruiting young kids is you don't know what they're going to look like now. I mean, these kids have grown up to be mature women, and, and for some of them, it's kind of helped their 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 game because they're they're stronger and more physical and I think Malia is one of those, um, but I think the key to Malia is just her hard work, great attitude, um, great teammate, uh, everything that you would want. So it's kind of fun to see her putting it all together for us. How's Reina uh, Carranco's injury um, coming along, and is there a chance she'll play the field? You know, every day I come out here, it's just uh, another day to find out where she's at. Um, I. You know, I, I, I know offensively right now that um, she's, she can help us and we'll be in a lineup. Uh, whether she's ready to put on a glove and be able to do what she needs to do defensively um, is another question. And it's something I'm, I'm not trying to push. And the reason for that is because I think Hannah Bowen's done a really good job and stepped in. And, and so either way, we're going to probably have those two in our lineup. Uh, so we'll just kind of take it game by game see what happens what kind of things do you do to adjust for all of speed well you have to shorten up I mean you have to shorten up you have to get your front foot down early I mean it's all timing and it's it's not trying to do too much with her pitches and I, I really thought that when we faced the velo it really helped us um, when we saw Rachel Garcia 
So I'm hoping now that we've gone through the gamut that we can make that adjustment with timing a lot quicker. But um, she's a good pitcher, and, and you, you have to have the mentality that you're going to stay on top. So it's more of a game that's going to be played on the ground, and it's more of a game that, that you have to be quick from point A to point B, and she's going to supply the power. If you're trying to supply power against power, that's when the swing gets long, and then you start seeing the strikeouts occurring. One or two more for Coach? How do you reflect on your own emotions following Saturday? You know, I, um, I was just, I, I mean, in coaching, you, you, you're thrilled when the process gets an opportunity to reap the benefits of it, you know, because there's a lot of hard work that goes into it from September till now. And so uh, as a coach, um, for me, it's just um, very rewarding to watch these young ladies be able to celebrate um, a, a big victory. And um, it's nothing more than that because, you know, at the end of the day, we get to start all over again in September and have the same expectations and have to put everything together. But this was very rewarding for me because I, I, I firmly believe that the success was due to the effort of this team becoming a team. And uh, I really uh, commend, um, and I've said this, I commend our, our seniors that maybe aren't on the field every day that have continued to buy in and have been a real positive part of the leadership piece that you need. And, you know, we say all the time at the end of the year, the best eight teams are going to be at the College World Series. Not, not always the best talent, and um, and I think this group has bought into that and they fed on one another. And um, to me, that I'm probably most proud of that the development that they've made in that part of the game, and then the development they've made with their their mental approach um, to, to playing big games. Because um, you're not going to win the big one if you don't, you know, if you, if you let the moment get too big. And I think they've done a really good job with that. And it was great for me to maybe not have to answer all the <laughs> questions about, you know, the past. Um, as I said, I've, I, I don't live in the past, but people love to remind you of it. And um, there's a lot of positive things that I can remind people of. But unfortunately, you, you get a choice of what you want to jab me with. And, you know, yeah, it, it, it does hurt. I mean, that's why I do what I do is because I, I want to win and I want to be at the College World Series and I want to win a national championship. But, gang, it's not that easy sometimes. And, um, you know, I, it's, it's like I'm sure Jay Johnson right now is not feeling really good. I mean, you, you, there's some things that are out of your hands some years and, and um, um, they're, they're a hell of a team right now. And I'm sure everyone's happy they're not in it because they could do some damage. But... You know, at the end of the day, he will he will do what he needs to do to move forward and get ready for the next season. One more. I've never known you to be a pacer in the dugout. Pacer? You were there I, uh, Saturday. You were a pacer. Well, the only dugout. reason probably is because you never get the chance to see in the True. dugout too much. True. Yeah. True. But, yeah, yeah, I was, um, I guess as I get older, I, I, I maybe pace more. I don't know. But um, uh, Do you even know you're doing it? Probably not. You know. When I was younger, I would probably be yelling out um, crazy stuff. <laughs> I've, I've got calmer, but so I, I take it out with my legs. All right, but thanks, yeah, guys. It was Thank a you. fun weekend. Yeah. Yep. Good luck.